Now, David Moyes has said he was disappointed with West Ham's big players uh, with big reputations after his first game in charge ended in a 2-0 defeat at Watford. Discussed hopes of a winning start in his 500th Premier League game as a manager were dashed by goals in either half uh, from Will Hughes and Richard Leeson that left his new club in the bottom three. For the host, it was another energetic and clinical performance that highlighted why coach Marco Silva is coveted by Everton. It was an impressive return to winning ways by the Hornets, who had lost their previous three games, uh, and the victory moves them up to eighth in the table. All right, I've got sports journalists uh, Michael Eze and Shayo Owulabi with me in the studio this morning. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? Morning, Mayo. Great all, to be here. All right. Uh, Morning, it was quite an interesting, exhausting game of football over the weekend, and the big game they didn't fail to deliver, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely, especially for Arsenal. Um, which opened the weekend and a um, um, bit of surprising display for those who do not know the Gunners against Tottenham. You know, the mm -hmm. rivalry, it's a derby. Form is thrown to the, to the wind and that's exactly what we saw. And for Tottenham, they were just not top-notch. Uh, maybe their mind was on the Champions League, but that would be strange because they've qualified for the next round of the Champions League. But then give it to the Gunners, a uh, beautiful display, totally dominated. Uh, and of course, on, on, the, on the level of display from both sides, the Gunners deserve the victory. Uh, Michael, would, would you say you were more impressed with Arsenal than you were disappointed with Tottenham? Yeah, I would say I was very impressed with uh, Arsenal Football Club, the way they played on that day. Well, we've always known that Tottenham has had one of the best attacks in the England, in the EPL. But on that day, it was uh, something that everybody was surprised about. On the, during the press conference, pre-match press con conference that Asevinga gave last week, he did say that his child will have to go playing without fear. Mm -hmm. And they displayed that on that match day. We saw that happening, where he, we were able to see the wing-backs join the, the white attack. players in attack. So, there was a high pressing star that we saw that day, and the defense line of Tottenham could not match the attack line of Arsenal that day. All right, uh, Mauricio Pochettino had his complaints about Arsenal's two goals. Mm. Uh, would you say rightly so? Because um, <laughs> uh, for me personally, I thought uh, the free kick leading to the first goal, Arsenal's first goal, was never a free kick. And the two goals, as you saw them, were also marginally offside. Yeah, marginally, but then that, that's what happens in football. There would always be this dodgy calls from referees mm -hmm. who are not, we all know, who are not perfect. And um, all you need to do is do your best. Okay. I think we saw, we saw that free kick. Squadron uh, Mustafi was in a world of his own, and he had the chance and he buried it. And that's what, what we saw for the second goal also. So there will always be dodgy calls. Not all the calls that Tottenham got in that game too was fair enough mm -hmm. but did they take their chances no so it's about taking your chances and that's what Arsenal did in that game well as in Wenger had his own lamentations uh, sometimes back against City because a City's uh, two of City's three goals uh, were a bit dodgy yeah. for me the penalty uh, awarded to Raheem Sterling was never a penalty as we saw it and also the third goal was yeah, two, in fact was not much yeah, it was, was clearly yeah, offside, <laughs> offside. Yeah, was uh, so how, how do you think all this can be how, how do we eradicate all these errors in the APL well unfortunately when managers complain too much they get penalized by the, <laughs> by the so they have to be very cautious about the words they use when they make mm -hmm. their complaints the referees are overprotected in the EPL we, we understand that EPL is a uh, very entertaining um, a league. league and it, it spills a lot of money in it so the English FA would have to do a lot to making sure that the referees are being cautioned probably through their league my referee board by making sure that they go into the games being cautious about the calls they make in the matches mm -hmm. so they don't kill the excitement and the passion that fans get when they watch and perhaps with the introduction of uh, the video, video assistant, assistant referee, referee. Uh, next season uh, we might what, see what, what was the video assistant referee totally perfect at the under 20 world cup uh, well, it's, it's, it's still at <laughs> its early stage, but Definitely. you expect them to get it right it's, from next season. Yeah. Okay, Definitely. let's switch focus now uh, to the red half of Manchester, Manchester United. A timely return for Pog Pogba yeah. uh, against uh, Newcastle. Man of the match performance. Definitely. After missing 12 games. That's incredible. De definitely. And, it, and, it, and, and the match actually showed what United have been missing. Mm -hmm. Largely. Maybe there are other things, but largely um, in, in, in that midfield. Someone to hold the game, someone to establish your presence and that that's what Pogba uh, did with that game he also got a goal which was which made it all all fantastic and of course that assist for the first goal is what you would expect a Martial or a Rashford to do while they're on the flanks you don't just cross for crossing sake you need to tease the player you need to make sure the cross 
it's purposeful and mm -hmm. and you pinpoint your your man whom, whom you you're aiming for and that's what uh, Pogba did I mean, he probably came back to show all the other guys that this is what you should have been doing while I've been away and it was a fantastic display uh, Zlatan also made an appearance yesterday like a 15 oh, sorry on Saturday like 15 minutes he came on and what a reception he got Zlatan. the king is back <laughs> oh yes, oh yes, the king is back. We all saw what he brought to the league last season when he was signed by Manchester United. And of course, the moment he got that injury in April, it looks like the season got derailed. 28 goals last season, he incredible for him. Super for someone that's uh, at that age. At that age uh, yeah. Coming into a league that has a lot of pace and physicality, he was able to quickly run, like, hit the ground running. is something that's very commendable. So when he was subbed yesterday, um, or whatever brought in, you saw the Rass innovation ago from the fans. Uh, and, and after the match, he said, uh, Lions don't recover, recover like, like humans. humans. <laughs> <laughs> very funny very sign funny, to, to, yeah. to slatter, slat, as you say. Uh, but looking at the game itself, there was a, a level of you know swagger and elegance and arrogance to United game, uh, which had been absent for several weeks now. Uh, for me, if, if, if it was this game was two weeks or three weeks back, Mm. United will probably have struggled with maybe a 1-1 one -one draw, true. a 2-1 draw, true. but it was totally different against Newcastle. V very true, and um, I, I think getting the equaliser uh, before before half time was was a fantastic one mm -hmm. for for uh, Manchester United. And of course, yes, the goal considered at Old Trafford the first this season the was a blight season. on that victory, but we must not take it from the team. We've not seen the team really, really do so well in fighting back and establishing themselves in games this season. And that's what happened. When Newcastle got the goal, everyone thought this was another um, other's field in, in, in the making, but it wasn't, the, the United side wasn't going to have any of that. I think everyone gave a good shift. And like we said, the Pogba effect definitely affected the side. And we expect that they will build on this in subsequent games. Well, how incredible is this for you? I'm still talking about United. 38 games on beating Adult Trafford in all competitions. It's that's Mario. A new, that's it's, that's it's, a new record. It's, it's, it's Mario. It's a huge record. It's Mar <laughs> very incredible. Very incredible. And, uh, it's coming from a manager we know has yeah. such reputation when it comes to keeping such records. Wow, that's, that's, that's really, really something uh, to behold uh, moving forward. And what then can we say about the other half of Manchester, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Sky Blues? Still, still going all guns blazing. How do you stop these guys, really? Uh, act of God. <laughs> 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 that does seem like the only thing. Because... I saw, I saw Kevin De Bruyne's goal yet again, and everyone is already saying, let's just give him the player of the year, because yeah, sure. <laughs> he's something else. Okay. Even when the team is playing so well and you think he will take his, 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 his feet off, off the pedal, he just keeps giving another display. That shot with the left leg goes to show that he doesn't have a weaker foot. Mm -hmm. He only has a stronger foot. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what we saw in that one. And the question is, can they go the whole season unbeaten? I mean, talking of Manchester City. Okay, that's why the question comes. You know, most of the times, I've always told my, my friends uh, of, that when, a, a team that wins the league has, has to keep their best players fit. True. Kevin De Bruyne presently is the best player in, in, in EPO. And if Manchester United, I mean, Manchester City want them to, wants to win the league, they need to keep Kevin De Bruyne fit. Mm -hmm. You know, some matches they have to have him rested to keep him fresh and away from injury. In that way, they keep performing week in, week out with this kind of uh, uh, results that we've seen often. Uh, would you say United still remain the closest challenger to Man City, especially with all the big guns back? Marcos Rojo was also back yeah. on the bench. As Zlatan mm -hmm. is back, Pogba is back. You know, with the return of Eric Bailly yeah. and uh, Phil Jones as well, would you say they remain the closest talent? De definitely, team? definitely. And I think, like like we discussed last week, also we can't take out Chelsea and maybe Tottenham too, but. For United, they definitely are, are big challengers. Okay. And um, maybe they've had their own fair share of trouble times with those injuries to Pogba, Zlatan, and okay. of course, Ro. Mm -hmm. Every other team will experience this in the course of the season. How well they will manage it is the question to be asked. So they're still contenders, and we'll see how far they can push Manchester and Manchester City. All right, pressure then on a manager, Tony Pulis. Uh, very unlike him, a four goals considered against the champions, Chelsea. Uh, four nil, it ended. Chelsea 4, West Brom 0. That's quite unlike Tony Pulisic's team. <laughs> Very unlike him. We all know how he, he likes to set up his team to mm -hmm. play. Defensively, Very difficult to beat. Uh, yes, not allowing you half time and space on the ball in the center of the park. But this time around, they got it wrong. I mean, Eddie Hazard was a handful to the defense. They, they couldn't contain him going forward. So we saw how he gave that, uh, the first shot that led to the first goal through. Uh, Morata. Morata. And then, of course, we know the coming back of uh, Golo Kante helped Chelsea a great mm -hmm. deal. The last time he was injured, we saw a Chelsea 
playing very like, uh, I mean, we saw what happened. Then the manager was under pressure because he now even had to come and say Ngolo Kante is the main man. Without him, we can hardly make things happen. And we saw uh, with him playing, he allows the attacking players to go yeah. forward without looking back. So we saw it happen. So when you say they are back in the title shout as, as we speak, Avaro Morata and the Nazar uh, got back in the mix of things. Would mm. you say they are back in the title shout? Definitely, definitely. They're, let's not forget they're defending champions. So just a um, few months back, they were, they were taking everyone to the cleaners in, in, in the league. So we can't take it away from Chelsea. The quality is still there. Let's forget they kept almost all the players, if oh not yes, all the so players. Yes. They kept yeah, all the players except maybe Matic, Matic, Matic and, um, and, Diego and Diego Costa. So everyone is still around. They brought in quality. Maybe except Timo Babayoko. I guess it will gradually settle into but, but bottom line, everyone is still around. The winning mentality is still there. The manager would scream his head off if they're not giving what they should. And it seems, it seems the team spirit is back also, which everyone feared sometime uh, uh, in, in the course of the start of the season. So there's still challenges too. All right, quickly now, uh, what next for them? The more AC began is rain as West Ham manager, you know, yesterday with a defeat at <laughs> Watford, uh, five, his 500th Premier League game and then in defeat. It was unfortunate for him going to Watford. <laughs> we all know how strong Watford has been. Marcos uh, yeah. Silva has done a great job with these young lads. I mean, he brought in some quality players like Richard Lissin and yeah. some other players that have actually hit the ground running. And then his style of play has actually made this team thick. You see them, backs of pace, uh, trickery, and yeah. then, of course, intelligence going forward. So it was difficult for them to contend with. And then it, we hope that maybe when they come home the next weekend, okay. then you'll be able to get a, good, a better result. Well, West Ham are now back in the bottom of three. There was some 10 minute spell in that game yesterday. I felt I was watching uh, perhaps Barcelona <laughs> or Manchester City, <laughs> where Watford completely uh, dominated. All right, thank you, gentlemen, for your time on the Breakfast Show this morning. A pleasure thank being here, Mayo. Pleasure. Pleasure. All right, that's our package on Sports Updates on the Breakfast Show. I'm Mayowa Ajayi. Thanks for watching.